Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and I'm bringing you rich poinsettias today, meaning rich in color, although it would be nice if poinsettias could make us rich. I'm going to be using the Avery L stamp set that has lots of poinsettias in it and lots of little greenery and berries and things, and some wonderful sentiments as well, and I'll be coloring with Copic markers. I've stamped the large batch of flowers and leaves in a couple places as well as the single ones and some berries to fill in and I've left one swash that is empty and the reason that I left that empty is because I'm going to put a sentiment in there. I didn't leave just a rectangle which some people might think would be the normal thing to do because a rectangle would just be weird. I wanted things to look like they had been spilled out onto the card. So I'm just going to, in real time, color a little bit of this and then I'm going to speed it up because a lot of it is just repetition of the same stamp. But I'm taking my dark color, my dark R89, and I darkened in the center because the center is where the, the flower kind of recedes into that middle. And then putting some lines around on each one of the petals because you know those poinsettias have very distinct lines on them, on each one of their their leaves. I guess they're not petals, they're leaves. I always forget that about poinsettias. Maybe it's poinsettias or poinsettias. I, we've always in my family said poinsettias, even though there's an extra I in there. So whatever it is, uh, these are beautiful flowers. And they come in a bunch of different colors, of course, so you can do these in a variety of colors. I'm doing some white poinsettias for my patrons. And here we go with adding the secondary color. The R37 is a good mid-red, which blends with pretty much every one of the other reds. And then I'm gonna to touch it up with some R05, which was the first red that I used. I'm just kind of cycling back to the beginning. And I decided to throw in just a little swash of R89 in the centers of each one, just to reaffirm those nice darks that were there. I wanted to work out what I was going to do with my greens and I put a really bright green into the leaf but I wanted this whole thing to be filled with color. Just a lot of really really rich deep Christmas color, very festive and all that. So I decided I'm just going to do a section of this to kind of show you how I'm doing it and explain as I go. And YG03 is one of my favorite greens. I, I like the YGs much more than the Gs. I tend to use them a lot more in all the work that I do because they're more natural color. And I'm going to use an, a YG99 for the really darkest portion here. Because the YG, by the time you get into a really dark color, it turns into these dull colors, these really kind of olive type of colors in the YG9s. But I have a solution so that it's not going to be this fully dull color. If you've taken the Copic Jumpstart class, you'll understand this probably a little bit better. But this YG17 is a more saturated color, so I'm just going to go over top of the desaturated color there and sort of change the tone of it so it's not that really dull kind of olivey color. So do this other side so you can see the difference and then see how I blend across the two portions of it. So I'm just going to go around the image, each one of the berries and flowers and things, just so I put some shading around that. I'm not really worrying about light source necessarily, I'm just putting some, some color in there, blending that with the YG95, and then going in with the YG17 to change the tone of the whole thing and kind of feather it out a little bit. And then it's a matter of figuring out what you want to do in between. So I'm going to add a whole bunch of YG03 and then some more G YG17 and then back to the YG03 until I'm satisfied. When I do things like this, actually when I do most of my coloring, it takes a lot of ink. And I know for a lot of people that panics you because you know you need to buy re-inkers. Well, just buy one and get over it because it's so much fun to put this much color onto an image. It, it just really is satisfying to me to come out with something that is, is rich and full of color. So if you're just in a panic over that, then buy a few of your favorite colors and do some scenes or things like this with those colors. Just focus on the ones you have re-inkers for. And you can do color around any images like this. So you can do all different kinds of things, different flowers or different 
whatever images and just put some mushy background because that's really all I'm doing in here is putting some mushy background colors in in between everything. So I've got my my flowers and then there's just basically a background that they all of this has been tossed onto. Hello phone. So that they they all kind of merge into one beautiful scene. So I'll slow this down a little bit again. I'm going to add a little bit more color now onto my leaves just to add some depth to them. Because now that I've, I can see the rest of the background, I know exactly how much more color I was going to need on those leaves. But look how well they pop out from that gorgeous background. The sentiment is stamped with Versamark and then I use some embossing powder, some white embossing powder on top of that. Works great on Copics, doesn't stick to the Copic marker. It's a fabulous thing. So thank you so much for watching. I'll link you to another poinsettia video from another year because I seem to do one every year. Um, some other things here, including that Copic Jumpstart class if you're interested, and I will see you next time.